right, guys, here is our next word problem. So this will be a continuation of the last word problem that we did where we had to set up a radical equation. Okay, so same type of problem, okay, just different wordage here. So let's go ahead and read it and then we'll talk about how we set it up. It says a car skates to a stop on a street with a speed limit of 20 miles per hour. All right, the skid marks measured were 40 feet and the coefficient of friction was 0.7. All right, so the coefficient of friction on that day was 0.7. Was the car speeding? All right, so they want to know, was the car speeding? So we know that the speed limit on that road or on that street was 20 miles per hour, okay? Well, we have this formula that we can use here to calculate this, all right? And again, this came from the last problem that we did, but it's gonna carry over to this problem. So this is the formula we can use, all right? So what this formula calculates, okay, it calculates the speed of the driver based on the coefficient of friction, okay? And the distance, okay, measured of the skid mark, okay? So what we're gonna do here, we know the speed limit was supposed to be 20 miles per hour, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug in 20 into our speed, or S, right? That's where the speed's gonna go. So we're gonna have 20 equal to, and then we're gonna have the square root of 30. Our coefficient of friction was 0.7, okay? However, we're not going to plug in our D value, which is going to be 40. We're actually going to solve for D. Okay, and when we solve for D here, we're going to compare it to the distance of the skid mark. If D is larger here than what is measured, well, we know that they were going faster, right? If it's smaller, well, they were going slower and they were going below the speed limit. Again, however, though, if it is bigger, that means they were not going to the speed limit, they were going above it. So all we're going to do here is solve. So in order to do this, right, we need to get rid of the square root. In order to do that, we raise each side to the power of two. So that's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna raise both sides to the power of two. Okay, this will naturally cancel out, okay, our square root. And then we're just gonna go ahead and do this on our calculator. So 20 squared, we're gonna get 400. Okay, and then we're just simply gonna do 30 times 0.7. So 30 times 0.7, and we get 21. So we get 21D here. All right, and we're just simply just gonna divide by 21 by 21 and let's see what we get for D. So 400 <clears throat> divided by 21 and we get 19. All right, so D here equals 19 and you could say 19.04. So 19.04 feet. Okay, so that's gonna be the distance. So the distance here, okay, if you were going 20 miles per hour, okay, should be about 19 feet. However, okay, we measured 40 feet, right? So they were definitely going faster, right? So they were not going the speed limit. So let's talk about another way you could have went about solving this, right? Okay, let's erase this. So we already know they were going above the speed limit. Let's set this up another way. So instead of solving for D, you could actually have solved for the speed. So let's talk about how you do that. So you just put S equals the square root of 30. We know the coefficient of friction was 0.7, and we know the distance of the skid mark, which was 40. Okay, when I do this out, I should get a speed of 20 miles per hour. If not, okay, this is actually gonna calculate their actual speed, all right? So if it's higher, well, we know they were going above the speed limit, all right? So let's go ahead and plug this in our calculator. So we're gonna do 30 times 0.7 times 40, okay, and we get 840. So S equals the square root of 840, and then we're just gonna do that in our calculator. So the square root of 840, we get 28.9, okay, and this is gonna be miles per hour. So that was their actual speed, right? So they were going about, mm, about like eight or nine miles above the speed limit. Okay, and that's how you go about solving it.